verse 6 through 8, and then Ephesians 5. Micah 6 through, Michael 6, 6 through 8, and then Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. And I promise you I won't be before you long at all, because the message has really already been preached. God has a way of doing things. As long as we don't question Him and move when He tells us to move, will always come out with the victory. Micah 6, or 6 through 8, stand to your feet when you have it. Micah 6, verse 6. Everybody have it? No. <coughs> Sit on down, Mama. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> we, we, are, we are a house of understanding. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Everybody have it? No. You got it, baby? Shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves, or a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn my, for my transgression, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? He has showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doeth the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. Ephesians chapter 5, and I'll just read verse 16. Amen. I'm sorry, Galatians 5, not Ephesians, I'm sorry. Galatians 5. Verse 16. Amen. 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 Now you have to say amen. amen. This I said then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We're going to have your seats. I'm going to use for a subject today. You just look at your neighbor next to you. Look them in the eye. Look them eye to eye. Make sure you have good contact with them. And say, give God, give God what, he wants. what he wants. Look at another neighbor next to you and say, give God, give God what he wants. What he wants. We're living in a season and a time where we choose we have the freedom of choice. We have free will. We can do what we want. We can say what we want. We can act how we want. But once you come into the full knowledge of Christ, your life should exemplify that you have a relationship with him. My good here is being questioned because God has now place the Israelites under judgment. And the Israelites were questioning him, saying, what does God want from me? How many times have we asked the question, God, I'm doing everything I know how to do. What else do you want from me? Because truthfully, sometimes we get tired. Sometimes we don't even want to pray. Let, let, let's just be real, be honest. Sometimes we don't even want to give God what he desires. Sometimes we're so beat down, push 
down and going through out the days with all of the days works. And we're letting what's on the outside come on the inside and infiltrate our spirit. But God says we're supposed to be of the world, but not in it. And the world should no longer be a part of a new creature in Christ. So Micah is explaining to the people, they're asking questions, what does God desire? What does he want from me? Does he want calves? Does he want burnt offerings? Does he want this? Does he want that? What does he want? We've given him everything that we have. Or so they thought. But the one thing that the children of Israel never gave God was them. You gave him stuff. But did you give God your whole self? Amen. He made it very plain. He said, y'all making this too hard. God told you a long time ago that the first command he gave you 10, he told you exactly what he wanted. It was to follow those. His very first one was love. Say that. And I'm abbreviating this real quick because we've already been, time has been far spent. So I'm just going to go ahead and get to my points. But the first thing he says is love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. And then love your neighbor as yourself. It is amazing to me that we can give him tithe and offering. We can give him praise and worship. But God wants us to love him and to love each other. Yeah, Lord. Oh, God. That costs you nothing. Mm -hmm. That's free. But our problem is we choose who we want to love. But what if Jesus would have said, I'm going to love that one, but I'm going to let that one die. I'm going to love this one, but I'm going to let that one die. Because this one did this to me. I knew she wasn't going to listen. I knew he wasn't going to listen. So let me stop them in their tracks. This is my life. I'm the one that lays it down and pick it up whenever I want to. So I'll decide who I'll die for. What if he chose not to die for you because you did not have love in your heart? What if he came in right now and took inventory? How many of you can say within your heart that you have pure love for one another? That if he took inventory of your mind and your heart and your soul, that he wouldn't find any contention or iniquity inside of you for another human being? He said, how can you be full of the spirit and full of iniquity at the same time? Is it possible? your flesh die daily. Get away from your selfishness and your self-centered ways because I desire to do a new thing on the inside of you. I have claimed you. I marked you. And I died for you. Everything that I wanted, I gave it to myself. I'm in the wrong church today. Is it there? <coughs> Everything that God wanted, he gave it to himself. Amen. The only thing he is asking you for is love. Amen. And to let your flesh die. But you know what tears up most churches, Samantha? The spirit of offense tear up more churches yes, 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 yes. than the word of God. People wear their feelings on their sleeve. Yeah. When somebody corrects them or rebukes them, God said, no more that mess. Because what if I come at the very moment where you have an ought with your brother or your sister? You better say that. <laughs> it's not time then to say, but Lord, no. Because love covers a multitude of sin. Somebody forgave you. So when I ask for what I want, I'm asking you to give me what I created you for. I didn't create you to walk in your own flesh and fulfill the lust of your 
flesh. I created you to worship me, to love me, and to love your sisters and brothers in Christ, and to restore them. Now, if this message is not clear, did he not exemplify it before the service started? Do you have enough love on the inside of you to stop your own agenda and take care of mine? Or will you stand in judgment and want to know who is wrong? None of your business. The only thing I need you to have on the inside of your heart is love. Because when you have love, you can walk around and see a spot on somebody's dress. And love will make you go buy a new one. When you have the real love of God on the inside of you, you will know somebody's refrigerator is empty. They don't have to ask you to feed them. You know they're hungry. An empty refrigerator equals an empty stomach. They don't even need to know you bought the groceries. Just buy them and knock on the door and take off the run. Okay. The real love of God won't let you hold grudges. It's tight, but it's right today. I'm sorry. But my instructions were that we were to walk out of this house into a new house with the same spirit. Because what we're leaving and where we're going, it's an army waiting on us over there. And if you can't love what's sitting right next beside you, you can't love what's coming to us. God said, I'm trying to clean you up in here. So when I tell you out there, you want to offend nobody and run them out of the church because you upset about what they said to you. Let it go, let it go. God said, I got people on Fisher Ferry Road that needs you. That's why I, I did what I did. You, are, you have to understand something. When God lets things flow smoothly, there is purpose in it. Amen. That was effortless. A sweatless victory, and the devil can't stand it. So if he's coming against your house, you got sisters and brothers in here with a right spirit that are joined together with you and fight that devil and pull him down. No, you won't hear it again. We don't talk about each other in this church. And if you've been doing it, you best find this altar at the end of this service because he said altar call will be done today. We will not leave this house the same way we came in here. Amen. God said it's time for change. He said, now I want you to walk in the spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you need to be asking for it. It's simple. Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. You don't have to go through what we went through. It's terrible in service. Not at the night on Fridays. Hour long, hour long, three, four hour long churches on Friday night. Where you're asking God, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, I never understood that for the life of me. When all you needed was what was on the inside of you. Do you not know his spirit is already there? He said, let us make man in our image. But do you understand the reason why you can't uncover the Holy Ghost? It's because you got too much flesh and mess covering him up. Yep. And the more you die yourself, say that. the more you start sacrificing for him, yeah, the more you'll see the anointing of the Holy Ghost on you. He said, I will not dwell in an unclean temple. Clean it up so I can use you. We don't have time for pettiness. He said, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and everything will be added unto you. So whatever you need, while you're seeking him and doing what he asks you to do, you don't have to worry about it. It's coming to you. What happens when your blessing runs you down? <laughs> Do you not realize that that's the position that you're in? I must be stepping on some toes, Daddy, because it's quiet today. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's quiet. They're listening. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> I have no way, Lord God. You can't say amen, Ouch. 
Because the truth is going to set you free today. You can't leave out of here and say she did not do what God told her to do. The devil is a lie. Plus, plus one, plus two, plus three, and four. Amen. You have to learn how to love for real. Love is an action word. If you know you got a gift and a talent, and somebody needs your gift and talent, you ain't got to walk up to them and ask them, can you do it for them? Just bless them. Now, I bet you I can come over and point to each one of y'all and say, what did God tell you to do for somebody and you didn't do it because you knew you didn't want to do it? Today's going to be your day of repentance. Because God said, what do you have? What, what? what do I have to do to get your attention? I'm on my way back. And I'm looking for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. Do you realize this church is chosen? What is the name of the church? New beginning. Okay, that's right. Is anybody in here? New oh, beginning. is anybody in here? Because I can't hear nobody. Yeah. What is the name of this church? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So then if we're a new beginning in Christ, why are you operating outside of Christ? Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. All right, now. Oh, God. Turn the table. He said, repent. Do I have to go deep with that? Mm -hmm. Repent means to turn from your own ways and run after him with everything you got. Yes. Amen. Then God uh, said he wants you to be more like Jesus. <laughs> I like that one. Why? Because you already made in his image. So now I want you to look like me. I want you to act like me. I want you to talk like me. Yeah. When somebody cuts you out, I say, God bless y'all. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Praise you. Give them an offering. A little offering. Uh -huh. Why don't you buy lunch for me today? They're going to be scared to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what a Christian does. We don't sit with the family. This is the family. The young is the family. We don't sit with the family. Leon, now you know that man cheating on that woman. And you know he beating her. Now what you say about that? Oh God. What you gotta say about that? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, that's a Christian. Oh. <laughs> now I'm coming over here. <laughs> Smith. Now you heard that this woman was cheating on the man. You heard, now you got so back with me because they need to see the difference. Now what, what are we gonna do about that? You know, pray for that it, but, but but you know, do you know if it's the truth or it's a lie? I don't know, just gonna just trust God and just pray for it. No, no, I need you to gossip. I need you to no, gossip. But I need you to tell me what you know. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> That's what the real Christian will do. <laughs> <laughs> when you are controlled by the Spirit of God. If somebody brings something to me, they ought to know enough about me now to know I get quiet. And when I get quiet, they need to stop talking. You know why? Because I've already gone to my secret place and start crying out to the Lord and asking him, God, interfere in that situation and don't allow the enemy to overcome them. God, change that mindset, change that atmosphere. Lord, let them come in contact with one of your laborers so they can be changed for a lifetime. Not just for a moment. Jesus. See, we so busy want to preach watered down gospel to make the people give that we don't want to tell them the truth that they die and going to hell daily. But we got to tell the truth. When God has put us in this position, every message ain't going to make you shout. Some going to make you flat cry and run home and get in your closet. <laughs> Why? God wants you changed, set free, delivered, and healed. He wants everything concerning you to be blessed. And you know what? Sin stops your blessing. When you sin, if your blessings was falling like this, when you sin, sin is just like a stopper. Think of the water in the tub. After you get out of it, it's good and dirty. After you come out of your mess, you good and dirty. 
But just like you can wash that tub with some bleach, God can wash your soul with his blood. You don't even understand the God that you serve can take situations and turn them around just like that. I don't care who you were five minutes ago. God said you will get to this altar and repent. He will forget everything that you do. And today will be what you forget in Christ. Now this altar ought to be full because I know everybody didn't think the right thought in this place today. I know this week you said something to offend somebody. I know you're gossip. Avoid us to not talk to you. 
But I should be out with you and people will run up to you and hug on you and love on you. Why? Because you are a child of God and your spirit draws people. Not drive them away. I have no respect of a person. I will tell my mama when she wrong. Can I count on her to tell me that? Mm -hmm. So what does that say to me? I go where my love is. Newsflash. Just because y'all have the same DNA, don't mean they love you. Amen. And they won't tell you the truth because they want you to stay stuck because they're not moving. And the only time you get the truth is when you go to a real friend of God's. It's got a word waiting for you, for you to run into. Now you go, and you go to your mind, and you know what you did, what you said, how you acted, how you rolled your eyes and did all that there. Ladies, I know we don't have any men that do that. Men, we would be having a different conversation in this church right about now. But our ladies, you know, you can control a lot of stuff in your house if you shut your mouth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Right. You have to shut your mouth. I told y'all, you don't have to always talk. Y'all better find your little war room and get in it. Write down and pray about it. Leave that man alone. God's got him. He working on you. How you gonna work on somebody else when you ain't together? Thank you, Lord. He trying to make you, and you busy trying to make somebody else. Oh God, have your way, Lord God. And then here's the thing about us, we so super deep that when God speaks something about us, we think he's talking about somebody else. Say that. Say that. Say that. Like him, Father God, have my mind back. Because that was for me. And you know it was for you, but you don't want to admit it. Pride. Come on, you're going to <laughs> Just there, God. I, I did it wrong. I'm sorry. Forgive me, Jesus. I, I did it. It was me. Forgive me. Clean me up so I won't come back this way again. Yes, Lord. Because that first warning is soft, but that second warning, it gets a little bit tougher. Yes, it does. That final warning, you don't want it. Because you may be standing up or you may be flat on your back. Don't play with him. Because he's sending too many warnings to us to get us together. This is not the season to play with him because he's on his way back. That's why he told us to tell these children not to have an electronic device. And I almost killed mine when I found out she had it. I don't have time to play because we are responsible for people's lives when we stand in this pulpit. We don't have time to be playing with electronic gadgets and texting in church. Because you need to be reading that sister. If this sister would have come through this door today, and I want everybody to be honest, would you have known she was ready to commit suicide? Am I the only person sitting in this church that would have known that? No, she came through the door. But you won't notice if you're talking in Texan and your mind not stayed on Jesus. Many people are coming to Fisher Ferry that are broken and hurt. Yes, they don't go to church over there because they've been wounded and tore up and tore down. You have to be able to read those people when they come through that front door. It starts with the usher. If your spirit's not right, don't usher that Sunday. Because mm, you can make the difference of whether somebody go home and commit suicide or whether some. What if she didn't stop doing what she was doing and go see about her outside? Mm -hmm. We will be having a very different conversation and my phone will be ringing in a very different way right now. We have to be sensitive to the spirit of God. Walk in the spirit. And when you walk in the spirit, you will be able to sense what's going on with people. You will know that a woman is being beaten at your job. And she's scared to tell it. Men being beat now. Hello. We got some women out there that's coming out. And the men scared to tell it. You have children being abused walking around you. Can you pick it up? When children gravitate to you, they're trying to tell you something. 
but they can't explain themselves, so it's up to you to walk in the spirit to hear it. It's stuff going on right around you, and you don't even know, because you're too busy worrying about somebody else's business. But you gotta get it together, because we have to serve this community. Does she have anywhere else to go? Does he have anywhere else to go? He, they probably do, but if God sent them to New Beginning, well, we will have the blood on our hands if we're not sensitive and hear them and do for them what God is crying out for us to do. It's not just by happenstance that our body is small and that we have a lot of children. Mark my words this day, February 28, 2016. When we get in that place, watch the amount of children that matriculates in that building. But we've already raised up warriors that know the word and know how to act. So they'll be able to help their own friends. We don't have to worry about it. You thought serving these kids was an accident. No, because if the kids come, the parents are going to come. And if we know how to embrace and love the children, how do we treat the parents? We know they have issues. If they come to us, they need to feel God's love and not God's judgment. Don't worry about your situation. God got you under control. If you sick in Him, if you sick in the kingdom, don't worry about what you need. It's going to look for you. It's going to run you over. You're going to Lord, I didn't do that. I want that. But I know what you needed because you were busy working in my vineyard. I told you I'll supply all your needs. That's why I told you in all things give thanks. Because I've already done it. I did it before I finished you. Your yes was in your spirit before I sealed it and brought you forth. Before I chose your parents, I gave you victories. I provided for you. But sin is what gets you off course from God's plan for your life. Let us go before the Lord. Father, we come now in the name of Jesus. God, we come obeying you. We come doing everything that you've asked us to do on this day. Father, these that are on this altar come, God, to repent for anything that they may have said or done that may have offended you because it is against you and you only that we sin. Even though we do it to people here on earth, it actually offends you because you are our maker and our creator. Yes, Lord. So God, anything that we have said and out of our mouths that has caused you to take a step back. We ask that you would forgive us right now in the name of Jesus. God set a guard about our lips that we won't curse our own destinies. Set a guard about our lips so that we may be able to pull our own sisters and brothers down. But God, let us walk in the spirit so we'll be able to hear an accurate word from you. So we'll know how to help those, God, that are not in the place that we are in. Help us to be able to help one another, Lord God, when we're in our prayer time and you speak a word to us concerning another person. Help us to be sensitive in the spirit to where we're not selfish, but we will really truly pray for that person. Teach us how to pray for other people when we don't really know their situation, but you're telling us just to pray. And when we can't pray, God, thank you for the Holy Ghost that intercedes for us. Yes, now, Father, I pray if there are any on this altar that do not have the Holy Spirit, let them be honest enough to say, today I want the Holy Ghost. So that they will be able to walk into this new sanctuary. Because you can't pour new wine into old wine skins. Let us be able to receive that which you have already given us. God, let us be emptied out so you can pour more in. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus for every life that you have saved here on this altar today. 
We thank you for another yes. We thank you for another opportunity to move and operate in your presence. We thank you that you chose us and had mercy on us. We thank you that you thank sent your God. son Jesus to die on the cross for us. We thank you, God, that his blood covers us and angels watches over us. God, we thank you that even in our mess you didn't kill us. God, we thank you. Because you are a keeper if we want to be kept. Continue to touch us, heal us, deliver us, and set us free. Yes, yes. That we may walk in your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.